Good morning. It's big Jeffer. Um, um, welcome to today. Welcome, welcome. Hey, how you doing? So today we are doing an exercise in breathing for a moment. No, today I want to tell you a Bible story because did you know we have a theology degree? That's right. Our our, our entire undergraduate degree is about Christian theology. It is, it was, it is, it was, it is, it was, it happened. And now it's been nearly 10 years since we did that. And so we have a lot of knowledge and a lot of things to talk about. And here, that's what we're going to do now, because we thought it might be fun to start a little series about theology and mostly Christian theology, because that's what our degree is in, unfortunately. Fortunately for you, I don't know. But theology and Bible stories and things like that, because we have great fun talking about them. So today I'm going to tell you the story about the book of Job. For those who don't know, Job is in the Old Testament of the Christian Bible, and the Jewish Bible, and the Catholic Bible. Just makes the rounds. Job is probably one of the oldest books in the Bible, if not the oldest one, and it reads more like a play than anything else. And it's about this man named Job, who has a wife, and a bunch, like seven children, and a bunch of animals, a livestock farm. <laughs> Because Job, this was an agrarian society, so your wealth was found in your livestock and your, um, Job also had a lot of servants, also known as slaves. Also known as slaves, not really a good, uh, Old Testament, it's a tricky place to visit. So, Job, um, oh, so back to God though. God, God and Satan have a relationship in the Bible. And this is one of the only books where Satan is like, full-fledged character, I feel like. Um, so, blah. God is bragging about his servant Job, uh, because Job is so holy and so righteous and does all the right things and takes care of all the blah 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 blah, holiest of holy, not faulty, cannot find anything wrong with this person. And then Satan comes back, to, comes to God and is like, Mm, yeah, but that's because Job has everything handed to him, everything's going well for him. Why wouldn't he believe in you, God? And so God's like, mm, I see you're right, Satan. So God tells Satan, Very well, you can mess with Job. You can test him in all the ways except do not harm his physical body. So Satan's like, Whoa, God, this is a fun game we're playing with a human life. So Satan goes down and takes away all of Job's livestock, all his servants, all his children are killed. They are murdered in, I think it's an earthquake, at a party. <sighs> Might not have been an earthquake. This is all from memory. We didn't review the book before we started telling you this story. Um, so, uh, they're all dead, except his wife. And so Job is very sad, but is determined to not blame God, to not turn his back on God, to be so, I am your servant, God, tell me what to do, God, and God's like, whoa, whoa, Job, a little intense then. And Satan is like, whoa. I see what you mean, God. A little intense. And so God's like, Cool, do you want to test him another way? And Satan's like, I'd love to. So now Satan gets to go harm Job's physical body. So now Job is struck with disgusting infections, and his body stops working correctly, and disability, and his friends come and basically make fun of him, and his wife comes and basically makes fun of him, and Job starts to be a little bit whiny at this point. Sometimes it happens, uh, and decide, and is um, doing a lot of questioning of God. And while not turning his back on God, it's quite a—it's not a good thing to question God in the Bible. It's not good. So, as, uh, excuse me. Then a young a young person in their community comes to talk to them, and young people don't normally get a lot of—they um, are not respected as people who are wise or know anything, especially about God, because you have to be old to know about God, right? Wrong. You have to be an atheist. So the young person comes along and basically is telling them all that they're being ridiculous and that um, basically scolds Job for whining, I believe, and for being like, you should get over yourself and actually just talk about what's going on. Um, 
that part I'm a little fuzzy on exactly what the person said, but I know there's a little bit of scolding of all the elders, and it was beautiful. So then finally, God comes down to earth, not as Jesus, just as like to talk to Job and to scold Job almost all the way to hell for daring to ask questions about anything at all. Because where was Job when God made the universe? Nowhere. So how you can't argue with God? who just took away your whole livelihood, your whole family, and your bodily wellness, and now is scolding you for asking questions? Right. However, in the end, Job is still found to have been faithful to God throughout the whole test. So God's like, Very well, Job, you passed. You now get brand new children, and brand new livestock, and brand new servants. Let's keep that cycle going, y'all. No. <laughs> The, the end of the story is that you stay faithful to God and he'll give you everything back that he took away from you because he was playing a game with your life with Satan. So, that's the story of Job. It's a wonderful book. I highly recommend reading it. It is full of contradictions and confusing things about what the fuck was God doing with people? And okay, so, we're both, we're both, we're both, we're both, we're both. Basically, atheists, because we don't really we don't believe in any higher power deity things. We believe in like the laws of physics. Gravity is a great higher power, <laughs> but we don't believe in God. So, anyways, when we we're talking about this, we we're talking about how in this book there's a God, and in Christian beliefs there's a God, and sometimes we are quite just dumbfounded by like, okay, this is. This is the God that's being presented to you in your book, in this book. And while it's a wonderful story, it's a good story. I love the book of Job. Most of our system does. It's a lot about suffering and injustice and how it doesn't really make sense in the end. And it feels like someone's playing with your life when really it's just like, it's what's happening to your life and you have to learn to deal with it. And Job does figure out how to deal with it. And I, yeah. So it's a very comforting book to read when you feel like there are conspirators against your life, and then you can be like, oh, maybe it is. No, it's not God and Satan playing with your life, but maybe it is. So the next time everything is taken away from you, maybe wonder if someone is playing a game with your life. That's a terrible thing to end this on. The moral of the story is when everything's taken from your life, you should, you should still believe in the person you allowed it all to be taken from your life. That's an abusive cycle. This book very well outlines an abusive cycle between these, th between these two deity figures, God and Satan, and this human figure who was doing the best to live a holy life. And the result of that is that his life gets toyed with, and then in the end, the, re the reward for dealing with being toyed with is you get it all back from the person who took it away to begin with. That's, what, that's an abusive cycle. That's what that is. So, also read Job if you want to have a really good illustration of what an abusive cycle looks like. Yeah. Wow. Didn't expect to end up there, did ya? We didn't either. Didn't plan the script. Um, but let us know if you want more Bible stories from our system, uh, or theology lessons in general. We can answer a lot of questions. Maybe poorly, but we will answer your questions anyways. Tell us in the comments below what we, we, what we could talk about. What book of the Bible? What theological question? Mm-hmm. Yes. Believe yourselves. Believe in yourselves. Keep living. We're going to see you very soon. <laughs> Sorry. I blew you a very wet kiss. Bye now.